In the last video, we saw the differences between the two types of components, which was first one, the functional component and second one, the class based components. As I told you, functional components are very simple components. And that's why these days people prefer using functional components. But yes, that is a separate uh, topic of discussion. But yeah, so functional components are very simple components which are implementing implemented using a JavaScript function, which return some HTML or a JSX value. Whereas the class based components are JavaScript classes, which extends the react dot component, and then which have a render method, which in turn returns the HTML or the JSX things. So yes, that was very pretty much a good introduction about what are class based and what are functional components. Uh, a little bit of changes that I did from the last video. Basically, I closed my command prompt and I opened npm start in my integrated terminal because I don't know why, but my command prompt was being non responsive. So yes, not not a big change. But yeah, I just closed that command prompt and I opened npm start in this. So yes, now we can see the uh, the live output side by side. In this video, we are going to implement our header component. And we are also going to style our app and header components. So yes, first of all, let's style our app component a little bit. Let me add a new file, which is app.css. And inside the app.css, I can probably put some, some stylings to my body. And first of all, let me see whether it's working. So let me put the background to be, let's say a good value would be probably uh, 0f1228. This is what uh, a dark color which I prefer. So yeah, let's let's import this CSS file in our app component as well. Very simple. We just write an import statement and the, put the relative part to app.css and that's it. And now once it's finished compiling, it should change the color and very good. It, it did. It's awesome. So yes, now let's add some more things. So first of all, let us add some fonts. I have basically included some Google fonts, which we are going to use in this application. So let me show you what uh, was the app. So basically the app was using two different kinds of fonts. The first one was this, a, a very pretty cool font for the heading. And then the other font was for everything else. So yes, uh, this was for this was the second font. So let us include both of those fonts. I will put the link to those fonts uh, in the description and also the header image. So there's this image which we are using in this header component, which I am going to include in today in this video itself. But yes, uh, I will mention all of these four links in the description of this video. Please feel free to check it out and pause this video and add this add these three links to your index.html file. So as I was telling you that in the whole video, in the whole process, we are just going to change index.html file only once. And that this is the time. So let's include all these three links in our HTML file. First of all, we link uh, to our Google fonts and then we link to that particular font. The first one is uh, this font named Lato and second thing is this font. So these two fonts are pretty much good enough. So yes, uh, now once we have done that, we should be able to use those fonts. So now let's come back to the CSS style sheet and let's add a couple more properties. For example, I don't want my app to go beyond X axis. So I'll just hide the overflow X. I'll put overflow X to be hidden. So this will prevent our app to scroll in the right direction or the left direction. Basically, I don't want that in my application. And let me add the font color to be for the app to be, let's say E7 E9 F0. This will be a good font, I think. Uh, I mean, this will be a good color. And finally, the font family to be uh, Lato and sans serif. Sans serif. So this does not need to be uh, in the in the code. I think sans. If I'm not making any any spelling mistake, so yeah, it feels cool. So now you can see this changed and this looks pretty cool. So now, yes, we are more or less done with the styling of our app component. Let's 
very quickly jump on to our next header component. I am super excited for it. So now again, uh, let's go to our explorer, file explorer and click it a new folder on it and let's add header. So this is again a, a naming convention which I follow. I name the folder to be the same as the component name and then inside that folder I add uh, the style sheet, the JSX component and the tests. So yes, let's add the header.jsx. Let us also add the header.css file. So inside the header.jsx, again, once again, very simple process. First one, always remember, was to import. I use these shortcuts, which is IMR. So yeah, uh, you can just play around with VS Code snippets. But yeah, all you need to do is import React from React. And then let us create this as a functional component. So just to revise our memory about functional components, since we are using a class-based component in this one app, uh, we let's let's use functional component and header. So I am going to use an arrow function, uh, which is you must have heard about ES6 arrow function. Uh, a normal function is basically this this keyword function. Uh, ES6 arrow function does not require this keyword function. We can directly instantiate it as let's say header, and then put it equal to an arrow function here, and let us return some some div from it. Let's say let me let me do one thing let me first have a container for it div and let's put the class so again one thing weird that you will see here is i am putting this class name if you are familiar with html you must know that this is class and not class name but it's not html let me remind you this is jsx and jsx is a combination of javascript and html now the class keyword is already reserved in javascript for example this is the class keyword this is how we instantiate classes so we cannot use class so that is how react understands that this is a css selector class not a javascript class so yes we do not write something like this we write class name so yes let's give it a name let's say a head container would be a good name in my opinion head container yeah it seems good and 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 let's do one more thing let us add a sort of h1 in here and let's probably get it give it a class name of uh, let's say a head hyphen text and let us add let us say let us call it name it looks quite good we need to do a couple more things as i told you in the previous video as well we need to export this so that we can import it in the other files um, my bad export header yeah so now once it's exported we can very well use it in our app.jsx so yes let's delete this h1 and instead let's have another div here uh, we don't need to use it i just love having this outer div containers keep it, it helps me keep my code pretty structured. So yes, uh, let me do include that header to that. As you saw, this header now got automatically imported. This is because of my uh, VS Code settings. But yes, if it did not happen for you, you can very well go and type this thing very simple import header from the relative path of the header, which is dot slash dot dot slash header slash header and once you do that you will be able to see name it in the in the in the file in the output that is pretty cool so we are just one or two steps away from building our header component let us finalize something let us let us first of all uh, add some styling to it firstly i'll make i'll use flexbox so this is not a styling course this is not a styling tutorial uh, so pretty i i'll we maybe cover flexbox in another set of videos that i can upload on my youtube channel if you haven't already do subscribe to my youtube channel which is youtube.com slash the lean programmer so yes for now you can just follow along in the slide in the styles don't worry styles are pretty pretty easy you don't need to uh, worry too much about them so yes i'll use this class name which is head container and probably first of all i'll set the display to be flex here and then i need 
my flex direction to be column because I need to show these images. Uh, there will be an image also here. So I need to show that image and that head in the, clock, in the column wise. So I'll just use the flex direction as column. So now that we are talking about the image, let's include the image tag as well here. Uh, so yes, all we need to do is include so first of all again um, i need to have that link to the image so i have provided that in the in the description uh, it is something which i have hosted on github so that this particular image uh, i'll just open it and show it to you this is something which i have taken from andraw.co this is a website that provides a lot of free and amazing vectors on their website so do check it out andraw.co so this is one of their vectors which i have taken for my project this is an open source uh, vector so yeah we can use it in our project let me let me just copy it and then let me just include a image tag in my in my uh, header component so inside this src would be this and then probably one more thing i'll name it to be as let's say head image how about head image head image sounds pretty cool to me and let's fix that Cool. So it shows an error that image, it shows a warning, not an error that image elements must have an alt prop. Uh, so yeah, we can definitely put it an alt prop. Let's say a header image. How does that seem? That sounds cool. So now we are very few steps away from completing our header component. So all we need to do is fix some stylings here. So firstly, uh, let's style that header image first. So let's type the head image. And uh, first of all, let's give this a width of let's say 250 pixels. Yeah, that seems pretty fine to me with 250 pixels, but don't worry. Uh, like, like about the animation, we are also going to handle that animation very soon. But yes, we are going to have a separate video on that. So yeah, after having the width to be 250 pixels, I think it should re-render automatically. Oh, that did not happen because, because we have not included the CSS file inside our header component. So let's just quickly import dot slash header dot CSS and then it will recompile our project and that is done. It is displaying in the column fashion and it is uh, rendering correctly. So now let's add a few more things. First of all, I need to align these things in center. So I'll just add align items center. And so it became center, awesome. And just one more thing probably, uh, or one or two more things. So firstly, I'll add our margin top to be 60 pixel uh, how about 60 pixel that seems fine to me you can uh, of course you can change it based on your convenience or based on your style and then one more thing i'll do here i'll add some styling to my header text as well let's copy the class selector in my h1 tag and then first of all let's have a font family the the funky font that we included included so that was actually hachi uh, Maru Pop. So yeah, that was pretty cool name. And then the style is cursive. So yes, it became like that. And one more thing, let us add the margin. Uh, for example, the top margin could be five pixel. The right margin could be zero. The bottom margin could be five, 15 pixel. And the left margin could be zero. So yes, that made it style pretty good. So yes, we are done with styling our header component and the first part, first component, congratulations, you have just made the first component of your application. That's it for this video. See you in the next video pretty soon. Let's pause it here.